think I might like Clank! Okay, we're off to a great start, folks. It's Colonel Sanders arriving at school! <laughs> Today's lunch will be prepared. The yet timed competitive caca! Alistair, no! When you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck, it's immediately crushed by quickly spinning feeders! Colonel Sanders smiles and screws closer to the fireplace. <gasps> You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will, will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. In some jurisdictions, is it even legal? But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast. Your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a sample breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous! My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence. Such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? I'm gonna flatter him, dude. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion, confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out of the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is wait there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night! I've been so desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something hadn't happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga. Yay! Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school history! I went on a date! I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him, you better keep your jowls turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. And so I said, yeah, sure, I could get to know the little Macau guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spat out of control. Did she just say skydiving as if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. Don't give Miriam time to tell her the whole story, however. But I'll leave the details of your whole night. It's just too much to bear. And I went on a date too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened. But the emotional connection. Wow. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. Being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong. You don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you encounter you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from the distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's well, a squirrely? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you one right now. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swearing with Sprinkles, please. <laughs> Sprinkles is a dog and a treat. You can get your swirly dip too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm, because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There's that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, Alistair, suggesting a pick on a defenseless horse! Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. Clench your fists, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince in pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives. Just as it appears, things are close to boiling over. A natural, 
intuitive person. He senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Owie Star, how is that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fine form by this afternoon. Uh-huh. Aren't, you con- aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What's he doing complimenting her? Hmm. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Alley Star. I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. Maybe you could tell me more about your thoughts as we are in class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. Seems sad, Alex Star. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who she, who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. And in an attempt to distance yourself from how slighted you feel about the interaction with Ashley, you take out the spellbook you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa! That's that book? It looks like bad news! It's just something I found lying around. It appeared to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. We would spend so much time decorating the magic book if it were really, if it weren't really powerful. I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings, cast only in case of extreme emergency, says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That's way drastic! Couldn't you do something else? Like, like anything else? Not run in dark magic? Maybe a tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Uh, no, I'm not gonna do it. No. Take your friend's advice. Put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Uh, reach out for some homework and give him a sack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially the horrors. Wait to see what happens. Uh, sh- Ooh, uh, he's probably just having a, gonna sneeze, right? Sprinkle stops and distracts. He focuses on the room. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on a cherry tree outside. Sprinkle turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence! I told you never to come back here, Terrence! I will destroy you, Terrence! <laughs> oh, that's great. Sprinkle is barking ferociously, drew a flying off of his face. Squirrel looks over, but doesn't say anything back. He wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Professorial tone. Ahem. I apologize for the outburst. This basically brings up an important point. Thank you, Alistar, for reminding me to dole out this ins- indispensable bit of wisdom. You see? Before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is up to by words and sparks coming into the back of the room. I told you to save it after class! <laughs> you think I wanted to be thrown from a plane, strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Where? But no, you had to show off to your cool friend kids, Jeff and Joan, J and J forever. But watch for watch his form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well that doesn't make it a great date. Beep. Word. 
Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Sad beep. <laughs> Clake begins to shudder. Steam pours out the gas of his paddles. And then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Bzzz. Beep. Bzzz. Oh, is he belting? No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. What the hell? Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not clearly it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. <laughs> Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast the pa cast a pall over the last final day of school. Whoa. That was unfortunate. But we must be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition of final competition showdown challenge exam. Trademarked. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. Before you can think about your upcoming exam, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Okay. I'm so mad I can smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could you embarrass me in class like that, in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke. Even if it's a source of her frustration, it's such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone! Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> you're not going to ride. You're not going to settle up a curl center stallion to ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe sort of, but I'm, I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. She's like completely unsure about that. If it's not pop, if it's not pop or clink or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't set on for the first someone to show a little interest, anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheek. I really shouldn't reveal my. I really shouldn't reveal my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. I bet that, and I bet that Professor Dog is gonna love it up. While you're prep talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head into the head to the arena early to practice the dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge, a test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent, and a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man man, and his evil er counterpart Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Owie Star's famous chicken pot pie! After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you. And you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, the Crab Sister is interrupted by Colonel Sanders! Owie Star, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. Pot pies begin to bake. The smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here and I was hoping you were here here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get into your head, it cost you a cook off. Besides it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but the decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes up behind you. Uh, ignoring like there's no sand at all. I'm gonna fess up about my practice dish. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. <laughs> wow, that's a key nose you got there, Colonel. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was pot pie just from the smell? Not just the pot pie. But a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ha ha, ha ha, no. 
I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat on this all day. There's no time left. Final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. Step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese, pasta, pot pie, practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over to the edge of victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. <laughs> Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. And wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients to an itty bitty pot of broth. This is Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock, boy. Ashley scoops up her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Even Click gets on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clink learn to speak English? It's a singularity, as we as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self destruct. Van Van quickly unplugs Clink and rolls him out of the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spellbook out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own. You're just bit not to see her win with another battle. So you take this opportunity and fight magic with magic, even as it's almost certainly an evil magic? No, I gotta do it the hard way. I can't do it the easy way. Remember what happened last time? I got injured. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm gonna do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Ah, oh, thanks, Colonel. I believe in you, Alley Star. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, Alley Star, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. Turn to notice that Miriam is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, shirt, sure, cut down. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam tosses a handful of spices directed directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied, and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get an eye of newt from? Boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve, wait, what happened to Gorko? You're not even you're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Gorko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I say you're doing pretty alright. But oh hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's part of TV. Cute crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kinda in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the spork monster, notices that you've got the, you've got the grimoire stash between your cook station. I see what you're off to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Huh? Yeah, you guessed it. Sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing us some fresh noodles and a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be top chef, actually. You know, when I was a uh, just a little spork pup back in the old country, you can feel a spork pup. You can feel Spork Monster is winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. I actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. I kind of like that time in Monster School that I had fallen asleep during Scare Tactics class. And when I woke up, he tossed a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. 
Uh, I mean, except for this huge tech bat, you don't know how you could have ever win. You summon extra power from deep down within yourself. I can do this. I have what it takes. I'm here to win. Your hair turns mac- What? Your hair turns mac and cheese color orange. <laughs> your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing this entire- their entire lives for. Hi, how are you? Yes. Yes, Ally Star. You are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning inside. Summoning it immediately fades back out. Interrupting my inspired monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you could do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful. Because while you're powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven can't be served. Don't worry, dear Ali Star. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Brace with your fortitude. Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today. And I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. Steps to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese. The time is almost up, so you're gonna need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes upon. And besides, Something, sometimes unexpected combinations can have a surprising effect that would surpass their individual efforts. Oh, is this for the freaking mac and cheese ball? <laughs> huh? Huh? Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can perform, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems like we're missing some students. Pop? Clink? From off screen, you hear a pure and instant giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying! It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, will you mind? In from the closet, you see Pop hanging from a broom hook by the elastic of the underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me let me guess. Did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. Looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks, I must say. It's not the worst prank in US, UCS AL history. But it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second, pranks, pranks. Clank, where'd that pressure cooker roll off to? Wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that one out later. That only leaves four remaining students. Please, collect your final projects. Yes, it's been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. Aw, I like how so little, oh my gosh. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny Nartomaki? I spy a float in this itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, Chef. Please, call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And more, and send some green tea made from baby tea leaves I picked up myself. Sprinkles carelessly sifts around the dish before opening his mouth and laying just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime? Would anyone like us like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. 
I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Ellie Star, for helping me to believe in myself. Bad Ben, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made. Udi over smooth egg custard in an axe hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you scur one type of urchin with spines for a second different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close to the account of all the spikes against the pie erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof! Woof! Please be gentle with my cuisine! Grrr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He rolls back as his tongue is poked and prod. Ouch! My tongue! Professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't, I can't eat this. I keep this poke in my tongue. This qualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that certain food in a bowl made out of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected Fad Fad does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Do not discount simplicity. This isn't the last of you heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley. It's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom turkey delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue, French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it anyway. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Ellie Star? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. Did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I go to College of Eating School for the Hungry. I suppose you could smell it absolutely, if you absolutely insisted. But don't breathe too hard. It might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cucked you. With that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake dice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. This class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? It began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese. It has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and high the bowl. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drumble plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen. Give me this, this thing. And completely blow me away. My 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem trans to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. 
The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back by in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. They were supposed to do there were supposed to be more battles, but come on! How could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. Hell yeah! The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. <laughs> DJ Dog is in the house! Ow, ow, ow! You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they have committed themselves to the righting the wrongs that they did while they were the villains. <laughs> For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghost allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the Spark Monster. He is finally, he is totally melted out. Everyone, the Spark Monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone's too wrapped about talking to Spork. Sorry, Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Aw, oh, Miriam looks so cute. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's not, she's, and you know she's gonna do great. Red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop! He's really late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A, a crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the fun exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to your father. He figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, I get it now. We get a new wing on the school. Not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. <laughs> the music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still, t he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not at this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? I actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This, this isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to suppress you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. Portal opens and Clank disappears right through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Oh, dead. Yes. Oh, okay. He's wearing normal clothing, actually. How are the classmates? Just like the first day you've met him, he's come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time it's a whole meal! I didn't get to be the most ch famous chicken man in the history of chicken a man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. <laughs> nope. The end? <gasps> Ooh. No, it's not the end! <laughs> wow. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Alley Star, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. Ah, uh, wonder, might you tell me? What are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know. A spicy musk, tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School, kind of before learning. Just to name a few. It is, it is truly my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance room, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my hundredth franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be 
So glad to spend it together with you, Ali Star. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Uh, um, I think this is something I just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be? You found a love connection, but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other life, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh, my dear Alistair, I suppose that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end! Wait, was that really the end? Oh, that is the end. Well, I guess we did end up with Colonel Sanders, but um, we didn't become business partners. I don't know if it's like a higher tier or not. I don't know. I don't really care. I'm, I'm just glad I got to share a dance with Daddy Carl Sanders, so. Anyways, uh, yeah, that has been the playthrough of I Love You, Colonel Sanders, A Finger Looking Good Dating Simulator. Honestly, even though this was totally a ploy for KFC to advertise their, <laughs> their mac and cheese bowls, it really just goes beyond, like, just being a, like, a one-note joke and... It, it, it's definitely very self-aware. It really pokes fun at itself, and it pokes fun at the dating sim genre as a whole, and I don't know, I really much enjoyed what I played. Like, some of the characters were really well-rounded, too. I don't know, I, I really liked it, and I hope you guys did, too. So, so if you guys enjoyed the series, and you would like me to play any more quirky dating simulators out there, because definitely, there's definitely a ton. There's one that I really want to do for this channel. If you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know by dropping a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you are already subscribed, make sure to ring that notification bell so you're updated on whenever future videos go live. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you guys next time. Jenny!